often talked about not making this sentimental in any way, to sort of hold everything down, you know, and to keep everything in, and not just turning on the emotional tap because we're making a movie where the strings, you know, the violins come in, and it, it you know, that that all that has to be held so deep within you as a as a as a person and, a, and as someone who's endured this and. You know, and, and I just believed everything Peter says, you know, and, he, and, and there was a time I remember when uh, I think Saoirse's character was telling a story, and, for, and I don't know where it came from, and I just started sort of crying a little bit, and I was so angry with myself that I'd let some emotion out, you know, and I thought, oh, Peter will be really, he won't use that, he'll be, a, he'll be angry that I put some emotion, you know, that I let it come to the surface, and I was so disappointed with myself. And uh, then I saw the film and he used that moment. There's just a really small moment. And then I realized that it was, it was real. You know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an acting yeah. trick to you know, cry, to portray emotion. It was, I was holding it deep as I could. And for some reason, I don't know why, you know, the exhaustion of making the film, or, you, know, you know, these tears sort of came to the surface. And, you know, and, and, you know Peter's clever like that, I think. You know, he used that moment even though I thought he would throw it away instantly. You know. What was the most difficult scene for you, or the most difficult, rigorous um, experience? Because this was a pretty challenging shoot, uh, going to these locations in Morocco, in the desert, and up in, up in Bulgaria. And so yeah. On. There was a time when I found the desert a lot harder than the snowy mountains, you know. Well, first off, I mean, we, we had to film in the Gulag, which was built to scale up in the mountains of Bulgaria. And we had to do a whole load of night shoots, so we were, I mean, it was freezing, it was so cold. And we all sort of, you know, there were no trailers to go back to, we were all just kind of on this gulag with all these other sort of, all the other prisoners, and it, you know, it felt as kind of real as it could get, really. And we had a tent that we could go back to that had a few heaters that we would, you know, try and warm ourselves up before we got back out there. Um, so that was a good way to start, you know, it was, it was... It was hard, but we all dreamed of getting to Morocco and dreamed of the, the heat of the desert. And for me, that was that was ten times worse. You know, I'm from England, so I'm not used to that kind of heat. And you couldn't escape it. I mean, no matter where you went, even in the shade, it was just so hot. And you know, and I didn't. You know, I I live in London, so I don't. Those vast open spaces were quite daunting to me. Mm. There was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to hide. There was no trees to hide under. There was no shade. It was, it, it was, it was hot. And there was times where we all got quite ill because of the food, you know. And we got that sort of. So there was a day when I had a really bad stomach pains and and having to deal with the heat. And it was, yeah, it was hard work sometimes. So you have a few things coming up, including a Michael Winterbottom movie. Is that going to happen? The Promised Land? I'd like to think it would. I mean, I, I know Michael's finding it hard to get the money together. Um, Middle Eastern police thriller? Yeah, the Set subject the matter. Yeah, Rough. Palestine. Is Colin Firth really attached? I and believe Matthew so. McFadden? Yeah, I believe that would be so. Great. It, I would love to do it. I'd love to work with Michael. I mean, he's a great, yeah. he's a, he's a great filmmaker. I wouldn't, yeah. And Upside Down, is that is that happening? With Upside Kirsten Down, Dunst? we filmed, yeah. You did that? Yeah, I did that. As a reaction, almost to to doing the way back with it, you know, it was a much more special effects kind of driven film. But I'd found it, and I and and I thought it was beautiful the way that the director had created this world, these two worlds. And I thought, right, if I'm ever going to do a special effects kind of film, I should do this one because this is, you know, very beautiful. And I could tell that director had a very. It wasn't just special effects for the sake of Solanus. CGI. A g amazing guy, beautiful man called mm. Juan Solanas, yeah. Mm. So I did that um, after the way back. All right, they're getting mad at me. I've got to go. But is, is that it? Is there? He's is there? Any, it's, a, it's the guy who's next. Oh, who's okay. been waiting for right, 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 who right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Christopher Tapley. All right, we're we're gonna. But is there anything else that I've left out that you have uh, coming up? One day, a film called One Day, which uh, is based on a, a book by David Nichols that I filmed back in London over the summer with Anne Hathaway. Great. Yeah, which... Uh, when is that coming out? The, books, you know, the book seems to be really popular, so, you know, I'm, it's a whole new 
I've never played a character that people already have a relationship with, you know. So there's, it's a different, you know, there's an anticipation to know, you know, people already know the character and are very familiar with the character, so they're not going to just accept what you give them, you know. So, but it was nice to work off a book and, you know, such dense kind of research all there in the pages of, of one book, you know. Thank you.